investors. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Good morning, everyone. I just need to go to this right away because look at the way this nine period moving average since yesterday was when was that? 2350. That was, I guess, last night. Uh, the nine in the ten minute e mini chart, the nine period moving average crossed positive, and it stayed there right away from all the way from uh, the would be, be so that actually was three thirty. Okay, so that must have been yeah right at midnight. Uh, we got four thousand and fifty six, and we went all the way to today's high of four thousand eighty seven. Now you've got a big red candle at a PG. Uh, well, I think it's going to be a PG. And one of the things that I was looking at is the boundary of the of the one minute chart between just amazing how it's stuck between 4086. 4, I had said actually in the den 4088 is the is the rectangle high. And, well, the border of, on the upside resistance and the downside. Look at these almost equal arch formations. Uh, that has just taken it out, and I said 4,074 on the downside. So we are still stuck within that, and uh, I just want to show you that for the moment. And it did make that second peak. Look, there's a peak D. I used a phantom peak right there to get the D. Phantom peak again there. Why I use that? Because if the unbalanced volume gives a little hiccup or the stochastic, I use that as a phantom peak to be ready to get out of any position or at least take something off because. If I'm waiting for a D and it's not going to come, you always expect in the chat wave a buy signal goes to a buy mode, meaning there should be at least four higher peaks. But the futures trade, the S&P futures trade in quarter points. So I, I use that because a penny would probably show up, but a quarter point could have a double top, a double bottom. All right, so we got that second peak, a third peak D. Chat wave uh, formula says that Ds are where you can, other things can happen. Just as simple as that. Other things can happen. All right, let's get back to our story. So I'll go backwards here. So the crew, a couple of people are asking about crude oil. Crude oil is up 23 cents in the continuous contract at 73.19. From what I'm looking at here, crude oil is starting to show right at that nine period uh, weekly resistance points at 74.30. I think it's starting to show some resistance. But the stochastic is really close to crossing positive. No, I shouldn't have said that. The nine period over the 14 is very close to turning positive, and that could give another little boost to the upside. If it deflects lower, watch out because 70, 7150 will be t uh, hit very quickly. More importantly, the stochastic is rallying, but it's not that great as a 59%. The MACD did cross positive, and that is a good sign, but there are still negative signs. As a crude oil question came in, um, looking at crude oil, where do you think it's going to go to today? Well, if I'm looking at the 10-minute chart, gosh, some of these I'd notated, but I had to shut down. For some reason, I couldn't get uh, my platform. It just blanked out. So the mouse is everything else, on my, all, the different, um, all the different programs that I have up are all working. But the mouse, the point is there, and I, every time I clicked, it didn't reflect anything. I had to shut down, come back. So, of course, I lost some notation because it's not automated. But when I'm looking at the stochastic um, in the 120-minute chart of crude oil, see that it's just stalled there at 51 percent, and it's reversing down. On balance volume is reversing down. The MACD is potentially having a deflection to the downside. So my thinking right now is that if uh, crude oil, which had a, the continuous contract, had a high of 73.86 and is now trading at 73.23. If it takes out 70, 72.61, that's, that's a big, yeah, I, well, that's all I can do. I can say that if it takes out 72.61, then it's probably going to test the 72 level or 71.98 where the moving averages are. Uh, that's all I'm looking at. But if you had to ask me, would I be short or long on a daily basis? 
I love 136 is the rule that I have for consolidations either up or down in any chart pattern. One bar rest and then you continue to the next leg up or down. That's great action. Uh, two bars, three bars, three bars is okay. Uh, it's not bad if we continue. Four bars or more, five, six, uh, that means you have to almost restart the actual action to get you to continue in that direction. So in this particular instance, uh, it's one bar rest. So it's kind of tricky to say, whoa, because all you need to do is have one little instance come up to say, hey, I, I can pop to 74.38 and I've started a leg C already. That's, that, that's one bar rest for peak A, one bar rest for peak C. That's very positive. But the, if there is a pullback yet at last into, into Friday and Monday, then you've got a stalling in the, um, in the crude oil. So there were two questions. One is, what, what do I expect for the day? And the day is that I'm expecting some kind of sideways consolidation. But if it takes out the low that was made of 72.61 a little earlier on, uh, there's a really good chance that it's going to dip a little bit further. But that's the best that I can do right now. And on the upside, if it takes out the high of 73.86, be careful because it'd be a real quick run. Uh, to extend leg B from yesterday just to continue leg B by going above yesterday's high. So I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big help here. Just my eye says there's a good chance it's going to pull back a little bit more. Now, looking at it on a weekly basis, I would just say to you, this is good action from the low that was made. We've seen it before. This is one of the bigger moves to the upside. It failed at a peak A a number of times, and even there was a, a peak B, but it was also the same extended move, and then it stalled. So it only goes to one peak before it has a big dip. This one has already gone to two, and that's a positive. So the weekly chart says uh, the MACD is still weak. The stochastics at 30%, not good at all. The negative nine under the 14. A lot of work needs to be done. It needs to come from the daily. And so far, the daily is just stalled. I was talking about that yesterday. I said I think it can stall in this uh, 74, just under 74 area. Okay, with that said, I think that the market has had its opening salvo. <clears throat> 1020 is about to come up. Now we'll start the next part of the day. What happens next is going to be really important. I'll just go to the E-mini again. We've gone down below the 74 level to the 72, and we've got a peak G, and we've got the 10-minute bar. Now the 9, well, it's a 10-minute it's a bar. It's just begun. So the nine period moving average is just underneath the uh, 14. So that's got an S meaning sell, but then you have to wait for the full bar to get a conclusion to that. It could still reverse and get rid of that S to go back to the L, which is uh, uh, the long side. So all I can say is uh, I'm thinking that a chunk of the work from yesterday into this morning has been done on the upside. Now we need to see from 1020 this morning Eastern time to about 11.20, I'd even say until noon, uh, what happens next? Because if there is a, a move in the S&P below plus 9, it's plus 15 right now, I'd say you have to now restart a whole bunch of buying to get back in to, um, to get back into the uh, 40, 70s, uh, 77 level. And that's going to take a little bit of effort. Um, a little bit of too much enthusiasm and you're a little nervous. So for us, we are, we are long. We've got longs that we want to add to. But I did say on a dip, we will add to one particular position. But it needs to be quite a bit of a dip. I'll be back in a moment. The cows of 71 has succeeded. Cows of cap tiger conditions out. I'll go through all the frequencies plus uh, a couple of questions that I had to do with stuff. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. 
Tom's Daily Market Newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. We're back, and we're looking at uh, with the Dow Dow up 55, S&P up 15. I, I got a really good question. Yes, yeah, it says, can you look at Intel? Intel, ITC. Right there, INTC. I wonder if all that work I did yesterday was updated. Yes, there it is. So Intel is up uh, 59 cents at 32.14. <clears throat> the low that was made down to the 25, that double bottom, I had said, this is the, the pattern that I always talk about. Oh, I need to show it here. Let me just do this. Click once. Click. Oh, let me get rid of those. I click twice. So I like to look at specific patterns. One is a straight line up or down. The other is the cup formation, and the other is the arch. The market is constantly just making these three patterns all the time. Within that context, they can make rectangles, they can do all sorts of things. But basically, you're looking at a straight line, a V-shaped pattern, or a cup pattern going from one point down back to that point, or a low going up and coming back to that point. How it deals with that left side, high or low, is really important. When you come down sharply, and then you make an H pattern fail with only a peak A or a B, and then you come down and take out the left side low, you can go a lot lower. When you're going up and you take out the left side high, you can go quite a bit high, depending on how you close above that left side high. Call this a dreaded H red, because when it goes down, it can really go down sharply. But this H can sometimes, if it holds the left side low and doesn't even take it out, or even takes it out by a fraction but bounces back up, you can go from an H to a lowercase m, a lowercase h to a lowercase m. And that says you're in a rectangle formation just stuck between those boundaries, right? We saw that in the double m, the, the, the double h pattern that we, we saw in the uh, e-mini. Let me just show you because I need to go apples to apples. So here we are. Here's the pattern uh, right there. Right there. There's your h and it held the left side low, it makes an M. What happens next? It made a third M and then took out everything because that's the rectangle midpoint line. I don't want to go into that right now. What I want to do is go back to Intel and say, so here's the H pattern, here's your second H, and the left side low of, uh, I think it was 2490 or something like that, 2459, 20, 2459, the week of the 14th of October. And then... 
It held beautifully on that rebound, uh, that re retest at 25.35. Look at the 23rd of December. Look at the pattern. Look at the symmetry of the bars. Then you come down to the left side of 24.73. That's higher than there. And that says, great. The lowercase h, h went to a lowercase m. Now you can bounce. And if you close above the arch high of the h pattern, especially if you can do it two out of three bars, doesn't matter what time frame you're looking at, that's going to be really important. Well, today, it spiked, uh, it spiked above it. It's trading at 32. 37 was the high. It's at 32.10 right now. This is really good pa a a pattern. And when I think about it, I remember Dave White, the late Dave White. God, I miss Dave White. Um, Dave White used to always talk about um, the different – because he was our tech guru when he spoke about these different uh, instruments, these symbols, uh, Intel and, and advanced micro devices, when he discussed them in great detail on uh, NVIDIA, he would talk about them in very specific technical terms to do with their the industry. So when he spoke about Intel, he said, oh, they're finally doing something. This is the first time I'm looking at them that I think that they can actually make, I don't know, but I think they can actually make money from this, this innovation. And I remember looking at it and I said, isn't that coincident to what I'm looking at here? And I believe it was maybe two months ago. Time flies, so maybe it was a little more. But I remember looking at it and said, Intel could be very good. And then we have uh, a listener to TFNN who uh, likes to um, uh, email me um, periodically or quite often, actually. Um, and he said, I, I like Intel. This is the same person who actually said, I liked why GE has earnings. Why are you looking at NVIDIA? And I try to explain that different instruments do different things. So you buy the high tech because they don't have the, the they, they use their earnings differently. And sometimes they have to sacrifice earnings for other things to get things right. And therefore, you're looking at a PE structure and you're trading the PE. You're not looking at anything else. You're looking at this high vol highly volatile instrument and you're just trading. So NVIDIA had a spectacular rally. NVIDIA goes from 108 back in October. It's trading now almost three times high, 273. Well, wait a minute. GE, this person spoke about GE. GE, and I just... Three days before it was going to split, I said, should I, shouldn't I get it for subscribers? Now I've got to worry about the split, what it's worth. Well, GE was trading in the uh, 80s, and then it dropped to the 60s after the split, and then it became GE plus GEHC, which is the healthcare part, which is now trading at its high, at its all-time high, what it only an IPO in December, at 80, and it comes out in the 50 area. So, yeah, there are different things that do different diff mechanisms, okay? So this is a fantastic thing. However, I remember him saying, I like Intel. I think Intel. Now, I don't know if you bought Intel, but you say, can you look at Intel today? A rare value technology stock that appears to be breaking out. If interest rates are done, going down, it's a new bull market. Personally, I think not much more coming out within the banking crisis. All right, let's just skip all that. Let's just look at what you wanted. So Intel has broken in the dreaded H that goes to a successful M-shaped pattern. So far, it's closing on, on the hour above the highs that were made. And I'll go to the high that was made back in November, which is the high of 31.34. So, so far, it's a, 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 almost a dollar higher. I can just tell you this. From the chart pattern that I'm looking at, I'm going to get rid of this um, right here. It's A, B, C, D. I think we've just made a D in the 120-minute chart, not the point. The point is, you see the way the weekly chart during this whole period of consolidation for six months. Uh, yeah, six months. You've had the MACD cross positive. The stochastic was okay, but really more more moving higher than lower. On balance volume made a really big V-shaped pattern reversal uh, the week before. Yeah, the week before the actual last low, and that was the week of the 24th of, of February. This is really good action. So I have to include that that's an A and that's a B. That's an A and that's a B. Then it comes down. This is an A, but this is a C because it's taken out all the Bs. So this is another A right here. 
in the Chef Wei methodology. Remember, I'll show you this in a moment. This is the starting point. And now I can put an up arrow because everything is looking way, way better in the weekly chart. And this is the low that I'm talking about. So as long as this low remains sacred, that was the 56 and the next one was 0.72. Remember, uh, 24, 56, I mean, this was 10, 20, 72. So this is the low. So every peak in the chat wave gets counted. So this is peak A, this is a peak B, this is peak A, that's peak A, this is peak B, this is now C, whoops, A, B, oh, 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 this is actually leg D. So this, I am pleased I did this because I would have skipped that. So this is A, that's, look at that. This is A, because every every peak has to be counted. You want to be ahead of the game, not behind the game. A, B, this is now leg D. That's not a problem because it's D, it's only coming off a low at D. So this is a D, but that is very positive. So I'll talk about, I'll finish it up because I think it's really important. A lot of people ask me about the semis and this is an, an important semi, I'll be back. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We'll get back to uh, that in a moment. To 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 uh, to, uh, to in a moment, I should say. But crude oil is now producing the same kind of H pattern. The one minute chart this is the continuous contract. Look, there's your H pattern. You come down, you've pulled pull back sharply. That's the the back of the um, so that's the back of the the chair for the H pattern, and now you're starting to move up. If this takes out that high um, that was made on the continuous contract right here for two out of three bars, that's one minute bars above 7337 the continuous contract, then you can move to the next level, this candle right here, the 7340s. Okay, just wanted to do that. And in the 10-minute uh, chart, it did a peak F and then an unusual 
sideways move that popped once to a peak G and then plunged down below the 200 period moving average. And that in the 10 minute chart is already 73.26 is going to be your fulcrum right there. Watch it closely. The further away it gets on either side, the greater chances are that that's the direction. And I missed. I missed a fabulous buy for myself right here with a doji candle and a trough D with a MACD turnaround. The stochastic gave a beautiful turnaround from under 20% to over 20%. The on balance volume gave you that beautiful little V shaped pattern. And now we're soaring back into the uh, to the resistance level, which will come up at about 4086 to 4088. Uh, look at that. Beautiful. And I can even draw this in for you now. We'll be back to Intel in a moment. But someone just say, said, uh, texted me to say, hey, just show us what's going on in the one minute e mini, which that person is trading. So, oh, man, that was a nice move. This reflex action making it look, there's the V shape pattern or the cup formation. Now, the cup formation uses this as a midpoint right here. There it is. There's your midpoint. Boop. And now your left side, right side price time match for bar symmetry says that by, let me give you the exact time, by 10.35, we're at 10.32 right now. There should be an attempt to hit, boom, that high of 10.01 this morning at 4067.75. Uh, um, okay, I'll be back in a moment to that. We'll, we'll check it out. Meantime, back at the ranch. So Intel, so the answer is, I love the fact that in the SMHs, as a couple of them were starting to stall, uh, Marvell, a couple of others like that, you suddenly got new leadership. You got leadership that came from one of the, not, I, I can't say it's a laggard. I can just say uh, Intel is almost like the GE of yesteryear. It was just an impossible um, a stock. It just, it couldn't get out of its own way. But finally, it's like IBM, it took so long for IBM to be recognized as a cloud computing company. They tried everything desperately. And finally, uh, IBM is up there. And it's, it, I mean, it's being very, um, it's trading within a big range, but it's, it's recognized that in, in that same category. So looking at this, uh, the SMHs are doing fabulous. I love when the SMHs, the semiconductors, are leading up or down because it gives you a good clue to the market action. Right now they're leading up and that's it's, they're actually breaking out. Can you believe that with everything that's been said, mm -hmm. the SMH, the Semiconductor Market Vector Semiconductor ETF trading at uh, 261.69. The last time it was there was, was April of 2022. Um, let's see, April. Aren't we getting into April? Wouldn't that be about 11 months? 11 months ago, that's where it was. On the way down, it went to 161, and now it's up 100 points from that. I, uh, to me, this is a market that's rotating through the different sectors. That's what I've said to subscribers. So that's why we're in different sectors, um, trying to garner whatever we can um, from being under the radar. Uh, that's number one. Number two is, Within that sec, that whole rotation, I'm just wondering, because let's see what Caterpillar, I'm going to be back to Intel in a moment. Caterpillar is just under the 200 period moving average. And that tells me that PAVE, which we were in for quite, uh, quite a while ago, um, this is the Global X US Infrastructure and Development ETF. That's stalling because in the terms of money going into infrastructure, the money has been dedicated, sometimes getting from the dedicated to the actual money implementation where the companies actually get it can be quite a, quite a while. And that's what I'm looking at here. And it could be because of you know the bank crisis. Let's just put it that way. So it's other areas that are really benefiting at this particular time. So I don't want to get too carried away, but I think that we still have a rotational aspect to this. And that just tells me that going into next week, I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Dow does get to a D and then maybe we stall again, I and D, U. Look, these uh, peak Ds, look how many Ds it's had, and then it pulls back very sharply. Uh, so I think C stalling at the 200 period moving average, maybe a little bit of a pullback, maybe even tomorrow, but by, by, we should get to a D. Look at this, the QQQ. 
This is in leg C. It should also pull back for at least one day or so and then make a leg D. The, the S&P has already gone to a leg D, but it's above the 200 period moving average. <clears throat> so that's good. So let me go back to Intel just to say yes. You're absolutely correct. I think Intel is in play. I think on a very short term basis, it might be a little overbought. But the fact that it's, whole, it's held, um, no, the fact that it's popped above these arch highs is really important in the weekly chart. I would like to see over a three week span that at least two weeks is closed above 31.34. Uh, Actually, that's not good enough. I really would say above 32. I don't want to make it too tight. It needs to, it needs to show that it's got the strength. And look, the week is, is still young. We've still got today and tomorrow to go. And yet the, the nine period moving average at this point, I have to wait for tomorrow's close, has popped above the, uh, the green, has uh, the pink has turned to green or turning to green above the black moving average. So that's a good sign. All right, that's a lot of things. In there. Okay, I didn't finish. So let me just show you this. SBX.X, that's the S&P. <clears throat> nice move above the inside track repellent zone in the daily chart. That's that falling X. We spent a little time for one of our dinners talking about it. He asked me, could you go through this? So the, the I really, I don't like to do this in the middle of something, but I'm going to do it now because the question was asked. So this is what happens in the falling X formation. And I'll show you the chart in a moment. So we should go to all the way to there. I just, it's a big ask. I like to see it as it's unfolding. And then I say, oh, look, there's the falling X and it's successful. But as I'm doing it right now, all I'm doing is I'm demonstrating to you what could happen. So let me show you. This is the distance between the low and the breakout point of the downtrend line. I like to do that and I go one to one with the Chapman wave. This is a one to one parallel extension. In other words, the number of bars that it took to get there should be the number of bars that it takes to get and I make this green just so that you know what I'm talking about green. The number of bars there, and I can't go it should be there to there. That is just wild. That's 4,200. 4, I don't like to do that. So just to be conservative, even this looks a more aggressive than I like. And that says, <laughs> I'm going to say it out loud now, but normally I do this very quietly to myself. On the 10th of April, there should be an attempt to get to 4,090. And where are we now? We're at 4,050. That's 40 points higher. That's a big ask, uh, especially in this particular stage, because there's still some uncertainty. Anyway, that's the way this would work on a very, this is actually a conservative way of looking at it. Um, I'm gonna, I'll leave it there and then I'll, I'll look foolish if it suddenly turns down and goes to 39. .50. I'll be back in a moment with Dow's up 100, as it is at 23. That's what's happening, Tiger Technicians Hour. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. 
Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, I think uh, we've got a caller on the phone. Am I right? Is there a caller on the line? Good morning, Basil. Uh, is that John? This is John. Hi, John. How are you doing? Basil, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. I wanted to um, see if you could help me. Uh, I listened to your uh, show opening, that first two minutes spot that you do, and you highlighted um, the Dow, the S&P, and the triple Qs, the NASDAQ 100 ETF. Yes. My question is pertaining to that QQQ weekly chart. I'm wondering if you can expand that out. Uh, I know in, in uh, you know, working with you and being one of your students and hearing you on uh, in uh, the Tiger's Den and Tiger TV for well over a decade now, you have a tool that comes into play from time to time where you see a point uh, in the future, uh, a future point in time in which you uh, can be looking for the end of an uptrend or the end of a downtrend or a uh, turn in a trend. I'm wondering if you could share with us if any such uh, uh, idea stems from your uh, QQQ weekly chart. I'm wondering if there would be uh, some point in the future that in your work would point to a turn in this rally phase that's been going on since October. So that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a question that pertains to using measured moves in time and in price. So this is what I'd be looking at. And that's a, that's a great question because it's funny. I was looking at this last night and I said to myself, look at the way. And I mentioned this uh, when I was interviewed by Tom the other day. I mentioned that the QQQ, the index 100, even with all the noise that's going on, has actually done very well in the time that we're looking at it with that major downtrend line, I keep losing this chart right here. Let me just do this. What I call the inside track repellent zone. Now, my theory with time and price is that if you're looking from the left side to the right and you've got a trend line, time alone will get you to that line. People always talk about trend line, trend line, trend line. A trend line is just, it's, it's just a visual representation of something that, tells you where there should be maybe resistance or support. But once it's taken out, how it's dealt with and revisited or not revisited to me is imperative to monitor. Because, you know, we had, you know, who was recently talking to Larry about left side, right side translation? Um, I look at things a little similarly, but in the context of tide. If you're looking at the tide of the weekly QQQ, 
you'll see that if I take this moment right here, I'm just going to do it. You're, you're probably looking at the chart right now, correct? I am. Okay. So if I take this weekly chart, and I'm going to actually move it out a little bit to make it uh, fuller so that we can get the, the impact of the lower lows and lower highs. For a while now, since the October low of 254.36, it went to a very quick peak A, B, C, D, higher peaks. And my rule of thumb is that if there's a very quick, especially B to C and then to D, be careful because you can get quite a sharp pullback, not a major sell signal, but a pretty quick pullback which is exactly what we, we did. So I'm treating that now as like a midpoint line. And if just on a purely uh, visual basis, I would normally say, great, now you can go from this high that was made back in July, you can draw a, a midpoint, you can go from the left side to the right, change the color green to the right side and say, oh, great, now you've got yourself a beautiful mesh to the right. And that comes in uh, the week of the 14th of April, and it says on by the 14th of April, if this pattern is to continue and the MACD is good, the stochastic is is improving. It's not at 80 percent, but it's 79.85. What's missing is the strength in the on-balance volume, but it is moving up. The nine has been way above the 14 for, for about a month and a half. Therefore, using this particular technique, I call this price. Here we go. So this is the left side. This is the right side. I used to called it an elaborate thing, left side, right side, price, time match. And then I thought, you know what? I've spoken about symmetry for so long. Let's just call it price symmetry, bar symmetry. So the bar symmetry says that the high of the 19th of August at 334.42. Now, you got to realize that's nine points away from where we are, but you do have two or three weeks to get there. But to confirm it, I have another technique that I use. I call it the inside, Chapman Wave inside wedge a target repellent line and there's a particular bar or candle that I go to, to it's always a, it's a, on the left side of the lowest low and that takes me right there so I actually have a confirmation that says if this particular pattern is continuing then we should see the 334.42 high of August the 19th the week of August the 19th hit by uh, the 14th of April, or well, the 14th of April, let me look at my calendar right here, is a Friday. Oh, that's in three, three, five days' time. That's a two weeks' time. So it's got two weeks in which to do that. But most importantly, this inside track repellent line, I usually make a dash, so I'll make a dash right now, uh, says on the way you've got resistance next week at 322, and then you can go all the way to that resistance that's at 334. That's the way I would look at it. Most importantly, I would also say, but the support of the 200 of the nine period, the green nine period moving average in the weekly chart of 301.52, uh, let's call it 301. The 301 area, if there is a close below it, any time, any day between now and say a Friday a week, that says you're stalling out and it could take longer to get there. So that's the kind of pattern that I look at. I have nothing now to say that it couldn't happen. Uh, but of course, the market is the market. I'm just saying this is the analysis that I would do. You've got your double U. Remember, I was talking about just a moment ago, I was talking about the H pattern um, that goes to an M pattern. Let me just do this for you right now, because there's the H pattern in the um, in the one minute chart. And you've got that H that went to an M. I forgot to put that in. I'll just do it there. And then it pulled back and it broke under it. And then I spoke about Intel. And let's just go to Intel because this all relates to the pattern that repeats over and over. So here's Intel. And look at the weekly chart. It's done the H pattern that went to an M and then it broke to the upside. Now let's go back to the uh, QQQ. And you'll see this is the exact upside down one that says, wait a minute, the 254.36 low, that would be the inverse the arch this is the cup formation that would be the arch that wasn't taken out so that was a successful test now you can go to it's almost like a head and shoulders pattern now you can go to the neckline so it's almost it's almost the inverse of intel and yet i'm looking at the upside for intel and yeah we've got the qqq but it's using the same 
uh, the same formulation of the pattern. So I don't know if that helps you, but that's the way I'm looking at it right now. Thank you very much, Basil. Thank you very much for calling. Very good question, and thank you for forcing me to do the work now instead of later today. Thank you very much. I'll be back, folks. The Dow's up 110, s and is up 23. So it was up 15 before, now it's up 23. I'll be back. There's a lot to discuss, and I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. FNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, folks, so just before, let me do a couple of things. We've got to wrap it up here, and then you go to Steve Rhodes. Great programming here all day. Look, there's the crude oil. Remember the H pattern I was just talking to John about? The lowercase h, that if it's successful and doesn't take out the left side high and makes another arch formation, can go high if it closes above the arch high. That's really positive. So crude oil went boom, all the way to peak E. I, ha I don't know if this is a single leg A in the in the in the ten minute chart, but it wasn't that that was a great breakout. So this is what I want to do. Question came in about gold. So look, my longer term gold. You see this long legged doji at leg D with probably a peak D if there's no new high this week. I'm suspecting that gold, because the GDX was lagging, 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 and now it's leading. It's almost like gold and silver that same ratio. So I'm thinking that gold. Uh, the GDX is telling me that gold is in play, but I think it's going to be a rotational. It'll be in play, and then it'll be out of play, and then it'll be in play. But as long as you start to make, at this particular point, higher, higher highs and higher lows, then all I can say is that gold is going to be there because of the fear of the financials, and they, they're not going away right now. So I would say that 
a worst case basis would be a 1940, in the 1940s for gold at this particular point in my longer term, the question came in about the longer term. If gold is able to close any day, it doesn't have to be a weekly basis, above 255 to 262, gold is in a different, something very different is happening because this long candle from February, I think it was last year, that was all the way up uh, to 20, 2150 or so, that comes into play. All right, so that was that question. Question came in about Microsoft. Microsoft at this particular point is peak A. They didn't take out the left side low. I can't do it quickly enough. A, B, C. Yeah, I think Microsoft is moving towards the long, the resistance in the 285 area. That's going to be really important. It's at 282. I'll do more tomorrow. And I, I got asked, could I do a little bit more of this intraday to show the techniques? I'll do that tomorrow for technical Friday. Have a great day. Stay tuned.